Hi, it's me, Joseph from Himalayan Bowls, and I'm here in my studio recording some singing bowls for the website. Uh, and uh, I noticed that the ones that I'm recording today really show the difference in ages in the antique bowls. So I thought I'd make a quick video and show you some of the factors that I, I uh, consider when I'm determining the age of my fine antique singing bowls uh, that you can purchase on HimalayanBowls.com. So here is a nice small 19th century singing bowl and if you look as I move it a little bit you can see as the light changes the kind of the bumps in the surface of the metal which are the hammer marks you know you can see kind of the color change the little kind of black grayish color and the brown greenish color and the more bronzy silvery color you see those variations in the color actually because the bowl's been cleaned so if it, if it weren't cleaned it would be more this all this dark kind of um, brownish color uh, but it has been cleaned at some point and so you see that kind of more mottled look but if you see past that you can see the hammer marks in it and you can see that the the lip still has a, a pretty defined edge uh, at the lip there's a, some nice wear to it and some nice patina and staining and so on so that is a typical uh, 19th century singing bowl where you can still see some of the manufacturing marks, the hammer marks and so on. It's not completely smoothed over from handling yet, um, but you do see some nice signs of age. Okay. Then, here's a bowl which is, is more of a typical 18th century bowl, which I know not only by looking at the, the surface of the metal, as I'm explaining, but also because it has certain features like this en engraved line close to the bottom, and, um, and the overall shape of it I know was only made in the 17th and 18th century. So this one actually could very well be a 17th century bowl, but in terms of just the, the aging, uh, I date it as an 18th century bowl. So the bumps that you could have seen in the, that you saw in the first bowl are now more smoothed over. It has kind of a mottled patina, also has been cleaned at some point, um, but has also, also a lot of stains and character uh, in the patina. So when I really examine them, I actually look under magnification at the surface of the metal, and even more fine features in the surface of the metal really uh, tell me what century these bowls were made. But um, anybody can look and see that one is a little older. I don't know how it looks on the video, but this is the 19th century bowl, which is a little bumpier. And a little more defined shape and as they age they start looking a little kind of smoother and more watery looking so we get to an even older bowl which has a, a color classic of the 16th and 17th century bowls this kind of very soft um, deer skin color almost it's really a beautiful uh, soft patina on this bowl and it's a completely smooth surface and if you look at the the rim of the bowl right at the lip I don't know how well this shows it shows really well in the pictures in my website but it has kind of a smooth rounded edge at the at the rim a newer bowl will have a more defined edge as they as they age and get handled and picked up and moved around and so on they get smoother so uh, and and a little bit rounded at the edge so that's a beautiful classic 17th century bowl a very nice soft patina and smooth surface so same idea with some medium sized bowls here is a beautiful 17th century bowl which is actually from my own collection this isn't one that's for sale but happened to be on the shelf here so I grabbed it and really smooth surface soft patina and again has a shape and uh, that I can identify from a certain period because I've handled so many of them that I, I know by the type of bowl also uh, where it belongs historically and this is a nice example because you can see clearly compared to the previous one there's still just a few bumps around the top of the bowl and I talk about this in my book that as the bowls smooth they start smoothing at the bottom and the smoothing goes further and further up uh, 
to the top and then there'll, there'll also be some smoothing at the top if they've been handled like this but generally speaking you know people pick them up like this and so you can still see some bumps around here even though down here is completely smooth typical 18th century aging pattern so that's a good couple hundred year old bull on its way and then a 19th century bull which some people might think is the oldest of this group because it has that kind of mottled patina. It just means it was exposed a little bit more um, or wasn't cleaned as, as thoroughly and so had a darker patina at some point and then has been cleaned since. So there's all kinds of marks and stains and so on. Looks really rustic and antique but it's actually the youngest one in the group. And I know that because the surface is, is still kind of bumpy. So this is a late 18th to early 19th century singing bowl. It's not quite as young as the very first one, but they're about from the same era. So, you know, and if this all sounds like a foreign language to you, then you can just say, okay, Joseph, you know what you're talking about. I'll trust you on this stuff. Maybe you'll see a little more clearly, even with the large bowls. Here's a 19th century large singing bowl which this type of bull, by the way, isn't made today. They're just starting to make them again. Um, but it, it was really a, kind of a lost art to make the, the classic large bulls. And you can clearly see the hammer marks. There's some patina building up. Really nice shape. And still looks fairly new, right? Hasn't been handled very much, but is a, a nice 130-year-old 100, antique. So then, a couple of older, large antiques. This one I wanted to show because in the first ex large one, you can see the hammer marks, three-dimensional, right? They're, they're bumpy. The bowl is bumpy. Here you see, again, I talk uh, about the leopard spot patina in the book and on my website, I'm sure, where it's not bumpy, but it still has that leopard spot, which I, I call it that anyway that kind of spotted look to it where the bumps have been smoothed over by handling over the centuries but the uh, color stays darker where the bumps were so it's a, a beautiful look that the older bowls have after a couple hundred years so then here's one that's kind of in between so nice distinct hammer marks, which like the medium bowls I showed you are, are kind of halfway smoothed over. This has the classic shape that was uh, produced uh, from the 16th to the 18th century of the nice large antique bowls, nice smooth edge, fine engravings, which are never done like that on the new bowls at all. And uh, really a, a nice, beautiful, large antique. So, uh, most of the bowls I'm showing you today, by the way, you would find uh, similar examples, or actually some of these are going on to the website this week in the Rare and Unique Gallery. So if you look on the Rare and Unique Gallery and you'll find some of these real treasures. Some bowls, you know, I know what they are because they were only made for a certain amount of time. So this is a kind of unusual shaped bowl that was only produced for a short period. is a completely smooth surface. Don't ask me why my computer just started talking, but before I was interrupted by technology, you know, I have this old world product and love for my antiques and, and Asian treasures, but I also love the technology and I'm, I'm, I'm literally surrounded by it here. <laughs> so this is going right into my iPhone. I have two other cameras within uh, reaching distance and my recording equipment and everything else right here. So, um, Old World and the New World together with the singing bowls from Himalayan Bowls. And uh, as I was saying, this is a, 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 an unusual shape that was only produced uh, for, you know, maybe 150 years around the 17th century. So I know just by looking at that type of bowl that it's, it's quite unique and, uh, and from that antique period. Now that kind of assessment is a little complicated these days because they're reproducing some of the classic shapes uh, today and making very convincing copies. So I'll have more videos uh, coming soon on that topic 
and many more. And the, the last thing I'd like to say on this topic is that what I showed you today is, are, are just a few of the factors that I consider when looking at the antiques there. I go into more detail uh, looking under magnification at the surface of the metal and I also categorize the bowls by many different types when, I, when I'm going through and sorting them myself. So it's a little bit of a process but this gives you some uh, insight I hope into how I do it.